Hey there YouTube, I'm Lloyd Tao and welcome to the channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create the parallax zoom effect that you just saw in the opening video. But before we get into that, if you like this tutorial, be sure to click on the like icon below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this in the future, click on the subscribe button. And as always, feel free to leave a comment or ask questions. Now let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to do is create a blank motion project. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use 1080 and 24 frames per second. You can use whatever resolution and frame rate is appropriate for your videos. Uh, the important part is that the duration be 10 seconds. So uh, through a lot of trial and error and experimentation, I've discovered 10 seconds is sort of the optimal uh, length for this particular effect. If you do it for any longer than that, it just takes too long for the effect to develop and it's, it's, it's just kind of slow and plodding and it's not very uh, pleasing. If you do it too fast, uh, say at like five seconds, then the effect just goes boom and it just happens and you don't even really get a sense of the motion or the parallax effect. So 10 seconds is what I feel that the best uh, time for this is. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the project. Now you want to go ahead and set the uh, um, the view window down to 50%. You're going to need this uh, down at that size so that <clears throat> when you create the the, uh, the drop zones for the flyouts in the corners, you uh, need to overlap them a little bit, and you also need to be able to grab them and kind of move them around. So having it at that uh, at that setting really helps. Uh, the other thing that really helps is if you uh, if you uh, keep really good organization of all of your um, active elements. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get lost. I, I get lost uh, when I'm trying to play with this thing and I don't have these all grouped together. So I'm just going to go ahead and create some uh, some groups to um, to store everything in. So we have uh, group one. I'm going to name this group two. Uh, I'm going to create a couple more groups. And I'm going to embed these inside of group one. And uh, I'm going to rename these. I'm going to call uh, call this set one, and the other one set two. Okay, that's all you need for groups. Uh, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to uh, start creating your uh, your drop zones. So in set one, you're going to create four drop zones. So create the first drop zone. I'm going to call that drop zone one, and then I'm just going to go ahead and start creating more drop zones. And all of these need to go in into here. And finally final drop zone drop zone 9 so there's all your drop zones created uh, the next thing you're going to need to do is create some um, some rectangular masks um, and this is what allows you to show specific parts of the screens and in this case the parts that are zooming towards you um, so you're going to create uh, eight of those uh, and they're going to be uh, attached to each one of the drop zones So I'm going to create the, the one for drop zone one first. And um, these, uh, um, you have to experiment. If you're doing this from scratch, you have to experiment with the sizes. Um, I wrote down the sizes after I got through experimenting a lot so I know uh, exactly what size uh, was for the effect that I got. So on these first ones, uh, you want to go into the inspector and under mask there's a size attribute over here it's got the width and the height so on these first ones you're going to want to make the uh, the width to be uh, 675 and on the height you're going to want to make those 330 okay and then uh, just go ahead and kind of push them down to where there's I don't know what is that about an eighth of an inch of gap all around the outside here and then uh, when you get through doing that, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, duplicate this. So I'm going to duplicate it three times. 
um, and uh, attach uh, each one of these down to a separate drop zone. And of course, uh, name them, rename them appropriately. Okay, now um, uh, rectangle one is going to stay in the upper left hand corner. Uh, rectangle two, we're going to move over to the right hand corner. Rectangle three, we're going to move it down to the to the lower to the lower corner, and rectangle four, uh, we're going to move it straight down. Okay, so uh, from counter or clockwise from left to right, it's going to be one, two, three, and four. Uh, now we're going to do the same thing with the, the bottom drop zones. So this is going to be another rectangle. This one's going to be a little bit bigger. So it's going to come down a little bit more like that. And it's actually going to be uh, 1050 by 560. Okay, and again, uh, let's duplicate those babies up. You can use uh, Command-D uh, in order to quickly make copies of that. Okay, and now, uh, as I said, you're not going to need one uh, down on drop zone nine. So, uh, again, five, uh, upper left-hand corner six. Uh, we're going to put that over in the upper right-hand. Seven, lower right-hand. Eight, lower left-hand. Now, these uh, get positioned out just a little bit more uh, than, the, uh, than the other ones did uh, more you know that's the other ones were what about an eighth of an inch these are these get positioned out a little bit further okay um, now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop an image into each one of the drop zones so that you can see what that looks like I'm going to start with drop zone nine so that's the whole background image now the reason why I started with nine is because you, you want to uh, set these up uh, these you want to set these up so that um, there's a, lo a little bit of uh, uh, space in there so that you can see uh, drop zone 9. There you go. Okay, so you want, you want that nice kind of cross effect in the middle there, and that's going to be the, the flat zone. And so now let's just go ahead and start dropping them into all of the other ones. Okay, drop zone 5 didn't get dropped in uh, properly, so I'm just going to delete that and redrop it. Okay, there. All right, now you got the image, and you can see how um, all of the drop zones combine to make a, uh, a single solid image. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to animate the drop zones. So the uh, first thing that we're going to do is uh, 
go into drop zone one, if you go, if you click on properties, we're going to, uh, we're going to animate the position. Uh, and what we're going to be interested in here is we're going to be interested in the, uh, the Z uh, axis. So we're going to want these to basically zoom out towards, towards the viewer. So we're going to, uh, we're going to be zooming them on the Z axis. So the, the first thing we're going to do is go down through here on all of these and we're just going to mark uh, a, um, a keyframe on the zero Z value. So just go down through here and just mark each one of the keyframes. Okay, so now we should have all of the all of the drop zones marked, except for nine, which is not going to move. Now we're going to uh, take the uh, uh, the cursor. We're going to put it all the way out to the end, and now we're going to go back and we're going to mark them again. And this time, when we mark them, we're going to add values to them. So uh, on these top ones, um, when we mark them, we're going to we're going to move them to 400. All right, there's your first set of flyouts. Okay, we're gonna go down here to the second set. Now these, when we mark them, we're only gonna set them to 200. So they move at a different speed. And the final one, mark 200. Okay. Now, that's, the, that's what it looks like when it's completely zoomed out. So if, if you scrub the cursor back, you'll see that they're gonna zoom back into place. So if, then if you grab the cursor and you start moving it forward, you can see the slow parallaxing effect that occurs. Now, uh, what I do, you don't have to do this, uh, but what I did with mine is um, I also um, animated in a drop shadow for each one of the drop zones. So let me show you what I did there. So if you, if you go right here uh, over to Drop Shadow, you can click on the Drop Shadow, turn it on, and you can see, you can see right up here in the upper right hand corner that um, you've got a little bit of a drop shadow there. Now that looks kind of dumb uh, before it starts zooming. So what you want to do is you want to animate the drop shadow to slowly reveal as it zooms. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So, um, in the uh, in the drop shadow uh, settings right here, you've got uh, you can see it's seventy five percent right there. So what you're going to do is you're going to set the um, the keyframe and you're going to change that value down to zero. Um, and then you're going to go out here and you're going to set another keyframe and you're going to change that value back to seventy five percent. There you go. So what's going to happen is, is if you watch now, as I zoom back out, it's going to die, and then if I, when I when I bring it up, it 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 goes ahead and displays again. Now, uh, in order to make it look even better, I I moved these up to 20, about you know the mid 20, mid to high 20s, and uh, so you get a, a more pronounced uh, drop shadow effect in the background there. So um, that's, that's really all there is to, uh, to creating this effect. Now, uh, in order to, uh, to, to run a series of different images or a series of different videos in the background, all you do is set it up like this, uh, render it out into a file, uh, go in and change the, the video or the, the, the image for each of the drop zones, uh, you know, one through, eight, one through nine, uh, run, you know, render it out again, go back, change the image that's in the drop zones one through nine, render it again, and you can just do that over and over and over again to uh, have a number of sequential images that are all, um, that are all parallaxing and uh, one right after the other. And then what I did is I just took a little short uh, zoom, uh, zoom out transition when I uh, was putting these together in Final Cut. And uh, 
I just transitioned in between them in order to uh, make the video that you saw. So I'm going to show the video again one more time after this, uh, just so that you can um, you can take a look at it one more time. Uh, and then uh, uh, again, I just wanted to uh, say that if you like uh, this uh, tutorial, uh, if you found it useful, uh, please click on the like button. And if you want to see more, click on the subscribe button. And in the uh, um, in the description below, I'm going to put a link to uh, some resource files uh, that you might find useful. One of them is going to be at the blank motion project uh, that I set up for myself. The other one is going to be uh, the little zoom transition effect uh, that I was talking about that I used in between my videos. So anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed this and um, I will see you. I'll see you around.